Joining us today is Don Griffith, the Artistic Director for the Saskatoon Jazz Society. And in the basement of the old post office, known as The Basement, with two S's, welcoming Don back to the show to tell us a little bit about the upcoming season. So thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me, Randy. A little different now that we can kind of schedule some things with the retirement from your teaching profession. and Yes, after 25 years, on. I said goodbye to the children, and now I work with adults. And now we can have you in uh, a little more short notice, and we appreciate you coming. Uh, tell us about the, uh, the Jazz Society and some things that we were here about a year ago or so, and, and uh, we've had some good feedback in terms of what's happening down there. What, what's going to happen this year? Uh, well, I, I would say that it's more of the same. I mean, I think we've hit a, a, a good formula with a, uh, um, you know, a good mix of jazz and non-jazz shows. Uh, the truth is that we probably couldn't present uh, all jazz shows. So we try to re uh, have our jazz shows on Saturday, uh, Saturday evenings, and we also have a jazz piano show on Friday afternoon. And then our other programming is generally roots shows, fiddle shows, uh, singer-songwriter shows. Where do you find that talent pool or just kind of look open at a, a book or is it a network of friends that you've uh, made over the years? Or? Well, there is no a book. I guess you could go to agencies and look at their ro rosters, um, but uh, a lot of it is uh, um, artists and agents will contact me. Uh, obviously, if they want to play in, in the basement, I would be the person they, they would contact. Mm -hmm. And so they'll contact me, and sometimes they're artists I've never heard of, and so I'll do some research, and if I like them, I, I think they're a good fit, then, then we'll consider them. Um, it's also word of mouth, like people will... Uh, we have a, 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 an act called Red Moon Ro Road uh, from Winnipeg, and uh, for example, uh, someone came up to me in the club and just said, you know, I just heard of this, this group, I saw them in Winnipeg, they're fantastic, you gotta book them. And, uh, you know, it's my job to take, you know, take what these people say to me and uh, do a little bit of research, and I, I check them out. Uh, there's this thing called YouTube, which is probably the uh, greatest resource um, for an artistic director because uh, you know you can really check out a band very quickly on, on YouTube and, and get a sense of what they're about. So I checked out uh, this this group and I, I, I loved uh, I loved what they were doing, and we brought them out last year and uh, you know our crowd wasn't that great uh, for them but it was their first time, and so what we do is it's their first time and you get a feeling if you know they're gonna they're gonna fit in, in the club and so we're having them back again this year and we're hoping to, to build on that and you know to help their career but it also helps the club uh, they associate themselves with the club they want to they you know they feel good coming to the basement and hopefully they'll um, and, and you know the, the truth is that people are either on the way up or on the way down in the music business and actually we've had people come to our room and they play a couple times and they sell out and then they move on to the next level right and that's uh, sometimes that's sort of bitter bittersweet um, but I think that's that's part of, of, of the music business so uh, to get back to your original question uh, we get suggestions uh, from, from, from people, um, people who have seen bands. We also get uh, agents contact us. And of course, yes, like my experience as a musician, I've been a musician for 40 years, uh, probably 45 years. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just connected to, I'm, I'm still really involved as, as a musician. So I, I have a, a sort of like a, a a database that uh, of people that I think would, would fit for the club and um, so those sort of three resources um, uh, work and I just sort of mix and match and we see who can come and sometimes I'll, I'll get an idea of somebody for whatever reason like for example this this um, this fall we're presenting Joey DeFrancesco and he's the world's greatest jazz organist and you might say, well, why him? Well, it's because we have a new Hammond B3. Actually, not a new Hammond B3. It's from 1957. But this organ is a, f it's the organ, the, the jazz organ. And so we have it now in the club. And, and uh, so it's time to look for an organist. So we were able to get Joey Francesco. So he'll be in the club on October 30th. When there's, you, you talk about uh, that type of equipment. Is that something that you, you fund and sponsor on your own? Do the musicians bring all the equipment? Um, and instruments, or is that something that well, musicians will bring you know musicians will bring their own guitars, 
that's you know a, a given because yeah. the guitar is very personal. Saxophones, they'll, they'll bring them, but you know grand pianos, for example. Uh, we have uh, two grand pianos in the basement now, plus the B3, and so those are considered part of our back, back line, and back line is what the venues provide. Uh, also, some musicians, uh, they, they, don't, they, they wouldn't necessarily travel with drums. If you're doing a tour of Canada, you wouldn't get on a plane with, a, with your drums. Right, uh, unless they you know were, it if you did, I suppose. Well, if you did, if you did, you have to be a pretty big act. Yeah. I mean, okay, when the Eagles tour, or when Miles Davis toured, or when Herbie Hancock tours, maybe he does tour with all his gear. But yeah. quite often, it's it's simplest just to rely on the club's backline. So we provide most of the instruments that our artists wouldn't wouldn't bring. When you look at uh, trying to to build some diversity across, you know, the the uh, season that you're playing for. Uh, you're taking a little bit of uh, the senior population and mixing that up a little bit, or how do you availability? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure what you mean. The senior in, in terms of, of your audience, oh. it, like, I mean, you're, you're a membership-based organization, yeah. uh, so people can buy a membership and mm -hmm. participate in the organization. Well, you know, our, our members are anywhere from about 25 to about, uh, I would say, 85. I mean, I've. I've seen some very young people and some very senior people in, in our room, and uh, so our, our programming has to has to you know reach out to those types of people. I mean, we're not a young person's club in the sense that if uh, you'll never walk into the basement and see um, 180 20 year olds. Right, it's a sure. much more diverse crowd. Even if it's a young band, there will be people in there that are 45 or 50. Even if it's a young band and most of the people are in their 20s, uh, you're going to see a, a, a definite cross section. It's not like a, like a nightclub that you would go to in Saskatoon, where you, you know one nightclub it's it's for the kids under 20, or this is for the kids uh, in their early 30s, or the adults in their early 30s. It's it's a wide variety. When you look at uh, some of the menu options too, I think that's one of the things that. Uh you know, we've experienced going there is that you've got something that, that's very good. And I know your uh, Piano Fridays are get there early or uh, yeah. you're, you're standing or, or somewhere in the back of the room. Is, is that uh, something that you look at as well in terms of that hospitality that you offer? Yeah, we're, we actually are going to be changing up our, our kitchen uh, a little bit this year. Uh, we're probably not going to have as many um, items as we've had in the past. But I'm not I'm I'm not worried about uh, people complaining because we do still have the nachos, which I think are the best nachos in town. And uh, you know, you mentioned P Piano Fridays. That's probably the best uh, way for someone who's never been to the basement and maybe who might be frightened of jazz or or doesn't really n know where the basement is and maybe doesn't want to give up a, a weekend or even pay a cover charge because Piano Fridays is free. Mm -hmm. And it's at 4:30 on Fridays. So if you're looking for a place uh, to unwind at the end of the week. It's a great way, and you can walk into the room and uh, you know sit down and listen to a great piano player and have a glass of wine and have some nachos. It's it's very welcoming. You know you don't have to drop down twenty dollars to hear a band, uh, to hear live music. So what is the membership? Uh, uh, the membership is uh, twenty five dollars um, for singles and forty for couples, and I. Th Think we're still offering a three-year membership, which is you know quite convenient. It's like your license. You know, I hate those notices every year to pay your twenty-five dollars. Well, you can buy a three-year membership now. When you look at uh, some of the acts that you've had through here, I think it's important to note that in order to become a big name, you have to start somewhere, and I, I think it's to your credibility in the organizations that you're showcasing a lot of that talent, and it's not just. Uh, you know, so and so is a big name. We've got to get them in here. There are some real crown jewels out there that you're you're tapping on the shoulder, and and that mm -hmm. is very active here. Uh, do you do you think that comes from a little bit of the the basis in Saskatchewan, or is it does it start with the youth and in some of the school programs or uh, after school voluntary type music programs? Where does that that music come from? Is it something that originates at home, or is it discovered do you think well you, you know people are drawn to music for for various reasons some people uh, become a musician because they want to be rich they want to be famous I, I think I think the true musicians just love music and that's that's why they want to become musicians and so they want to perform I mean 
you know, that's really what it is. I mean, I, I love sitting down and playing the piano, but it, there's, it's a different feeling to play for people and to share that with people. And so at the basement, we provide that. Uh, we provide a venue for people to see live music and for uh, established musicians and up-and-coming musicians uh, to experience that. You know, uh, live music is not going away. I know the world has changed. Uh, when I was younger as a musician, I made a living playing six nights a week and playing live music and that might not exist right now but that doesn't mean live music is going away. In a thousand years we'll still have live music. It's not all going to be people watching images of it. There will still be live music and so uh, we're part of that that uh, ongoing arts organ uh, arts group that says this is this is valuable. Like you know when you when, you, when people get together and, and watch something, there's something that happens that doesn't happen when you're sitting in your basement looking at a screen. And, uh, you know, that community feeling, uh, music brings people together. And uh, so that's, that's part of it. It's, it's yeah, I think there's a bit of an interaction sometimes with the musician and oh, yeah. the audience and, and that. Yeah, you know, it's not much fun uh, a band playing when nobody's there. I mean, yeah, it's fun. I mean, you know, musicians get together and jam and have lots of fun. But when, when there's an audience there, then suddenly there's a different a dynamic. Thing. Yeah. 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 What, uh, what could we expect in the next uh, five to six months here, taking us into spring? Well, uh, 65, 64 con live concerts uh, between uh, September 10th and February 5th, starting with uh, next. Uh, Next Thursday, September 10th, is when we start uh, with Dennis Ellsworth. And then we have In With The Old. They're all in their teens. And then uh, the Stone Frigate Band on Saturday. Um, that's a, a, large, a large, big band, if you know what I mean. 17 yeah. members plus Robin Knight singing. Uh, and then it just carries right on uh, three or four shows a week. Uh, Joy D. Francesco on October 30th. Uh, we have a, uh, a Frank Sinatra specialist from... Um, Calgary, his name is Robert Young. He's been in, in town here before and uh, worked with the uh, Saskatoon Jazz Orchestra. And uh, he's coming to the basement on November 7th. And this year is Frank Sinatra's, uh, the centenary of his uh, birth. And so in, in honor of that, he's going to do a night of all Frank Sinatra on November 7th. So that's, that's, uh, that's a big show. I could actually go through the, the uh, whole... whole uh, whole schedule here, but maybe it's time for a commercial. I, th I think uh, we'll close on that note that we'll have the ability to, to come down to the basement and see that firsthand, but uh, yeah, all the yeah. best of success continued, and we'll see you down there. Thanks, Randy. Yeah, We'll be right back.